Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to explore two theorems involving triangles. The no choice theorem and angle angle side, which we will use to prove triangles congruent. Let's rewind the clock a little bit and let's recall that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So no matter what kind of triangle it is, if you add up all the interior angles, they will equal 180 degrees. Well, in our two triangles here, triangle ABC and A prime, B prime, C prime, we can see that angle B is congruent to B prime and angle C is congruent to C prime. So angle B and angle C take up the exact same number of degrees that B prime and C prime will take up. So the number of degrees left over for angle A has to be the exact same number of degrees left over for A prime. This is what we call no choice. Angle A has to be congruent to angle A prime by no choice. There's no choice but to have the same number of degrees left over because two of the corresponding angles in each of the two triangles are already congruent. So the no choice theorem tells us if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles in another triangle, then the third angles must be congruent by no choice. Now keep in mind that no choice will only prove angles congruent. It's the only thing it does. It does not prove triangles congruent. No choice only proves angles congruent. But speaking of proving triangles congruent, let's take a look at proving triangles congruent by angle side angle. We have angle side angle. That must mean we have two congruent angles in a triangle, two congruent corresponding angles, and a corresponding side. So here I have triangle ABC is congruent to triangle YXZ. Notice I flip my correspondence here with the angles, but that's okay. Well, let's take a look at something else. Don't we know that angle C has to be congruent to angle Z? Essentially by no choice that we just studied. But if I eliminated the congruency for angle X and angle B, well, these triangles still have to be congruent. If they were congruent previously by angle side angle, and we know that angle C is congruent to angle Z, well, that must mean that all we really need are two corresponding angles and a non-included side. Of course, the non-included side has to be a corresponding side. So if we have any two angles and a corresponding side congruent in two triangles, we can prove the triangles congruent. And we call this angle, angle side. So angle, angle side will prove two triangles congruent. So we can add that to our list of reasons for proving triangles congruent. We have side, side, angle, side, 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 HL, angle, side, angle, and now our new one, angle, angle, side. Notice that side, side, angle is absent from our list. There's no side, side, angle, and I promise there won't be. We won't be using side, side, angle to prove triangles congruent. Let's take a look at a sample problem. Let's do a proof, and we'll apply angle, angle, side. We're given our figure here, GJ, KM is a rhombus, and we're given that OJ is perpendicular to GM, and MH is perpendicular to GJ. So since we have perpendicular segments, we will have right angles. So once we write our givens in, I can say, 
that angle J O G and angle M H G are right angles. And we can do that because we can say perpendicular segments form right angles. Now our goal here is to get MH, the segment inside congruent to JO, that segment inside. So we're going to prove these triangles congruent. We've got our two right angles. Those are going to be congruent. Angle JOG is congruent to angle MHG. And that's because all right angles are congruent. Now, we were given that our figure is a rhombus. Well, how is that going to help us? Well, that tells us that side MG is going to be congruent to side GJ because we know that consecutive sides of a rhombus are congruent. So, step five, GJ is congruent to MG. And our reason is that a rhombus implies consecutive sides congruent. So I've got an angle, I've got a side, and as it turns out, our two overlapping triangles here both share angle G. So angle G is going to be reflexive. And taking another look, we have got ourselves angle, the right angle, kind of my upright triangle here, angle, the right angle, angle G, and all of side GJ. I beg your pardon, that's the laying down triangle, and triangle OGJ. And in our upright triangle, we have angle H, the right angle, angle G, and then side GM. So we have angle, angle side. So our two triangles are now congruent by angle angle side. And that is steps four, five, and six. And then finally our proof final reason to get segment MH congruent to JO is CPCTC. And let me go back and put my congruent triangles in. Again, it's triangle MGH, the upright triangle. Is congruent to triangle J, G, H. So, there's an example of using angle, angle, side in a proof. You will also be using no choice in a proof. And that only proves angles congruent. And you work more on that when I see you in class.